So to start off in this presentation, we're going to be covering transferable skills. If you haven't heard that term before, if you're not sure what that is, um, don't worry, I will definitely explain that to you guys. I'll explain why they are important in terms of developing your own resume, as well as in the interview process. And also, we are going to apply that information to the current uh, COVID context, and especially considering a post-COVID-19 workforce, which we will all be entering soon. Um, we're also going to give out some information about um, really navigating the local job market, again, focusing on the Quebec City context. To start off, um, just to introduce you to the uh, organizations that you are being presented by today, uh, Yes Montreal is an English-speaking um, employment service that has been running for 25 years. We had our anniversary a few weeks ago, so yay. Um, we are absolutely devoted to helping English speakers across the province of Quebec. While we are based in Montreal, we also love to do outreach workshops and work with people living outside of the Montreal region, off the island of Montreal including people living in Quebec City, such as yourself. Um, I am currently an assistant employment counselor at Yes Montreal, um, so it gives me great joy to be able to present this presentation to you and have developed these um, examples, uh, these resources for you guys today. We are also working with the Voice of English Speaking Quebec for this presentation. This is an organization that you guys might be a bit more familiar with. I myself am also familiar with this organization. I actually grew up in Quebec City. I went to school there my entire life. Um, so I know Voice of English Speaking Quebec very well, and I can 100% vouch for this information on the screen at the moment. Um, they are a nonprofit dedicated to helping out the English speaking community in the greater Quebec City region, um, and they represent a population, the English speaking population, that represents about 2% of the total Quebec population. Um, and while doing that, they even happen to help out around 400 to 500 newcomers every single year. You have no doubt uh, heard information through Voice of English Speaking Quebec attended local of events held by them or held in partnership with them. I know that my childhood and my teen years were filled with news and information coming from VEC. Um, so it's an organization that's close to my heart and I'm very happy that we had the chance to really present this in partnership with them. I will be giving a bit more information about both these organizations at the end of the presentation if you have any more questions about that. But the main focus today is going to be job search success in a post-COVID-19 market. At the moment, maybe you're currently facing a layoff, maybe you have been transitioning into another career or you're considering it, considering going back to school, or have just been out of work for a while, maybe feeling a bit lost. So at the moment, finding a job and doing some job, essential job search tasks can seem a bit uncertain, unattainable, and unachievable at the moment. However, what if it were to become adaptable, accessible, and achievable? Um, there are ways in order for to become all of these things, and the key to that success is, in fact, transferable skills. So right now, the reasons why it feels like it's unattainable, why you can't achieve success at this moment, is because the news is absolutely filled with layoffs, layoffs, bankruptcies, shortages, all filling the headlines. It's all a lot of us have heard about for the past few months. Indeed.com was receiving half of the posted got list time last year for jobs being posted. Um, that being said, um, it's not all bad news, and this is definitely not a permanent situation. While definitely there are areas of uh, the market that were targeted more specifically, such as retail and most likely a lot of industries that you guys might be in today, um, there were in fact a lot of people that were still working more so remotely. 3.3 million Canadians were actually working from home throughout the month of April. Um, so that tells you and can give you a sign that not all work stopped, not everyone was unemployed throughout this period, and that is definitely a great sign when it comes to companies rehiring, when it comes to the market opening up and expanding once again. Companies are in fact still hiring and have been hiring throughout this phase and are going to be increasingly hiring, especially with the changes in different um, health rules and guidelines going on right now. And as companies return, you will see a rise in both familiar jobs as well as new jobs going around, particularly in an administration positions. Um, this is especially the case because there are a lot of changes going on that companies have to adapt to. So they need staff members to help them adapt to those changes. That's going to include new positions and old positions. 
administration assistants, receptionists, once a lot of organizations and companies open up physically at their regular centers and offices. You will need more people working in data entry and customer service. So all of these areas uh, of the market are gonna begin to open up once more. What can feel a bit of a, of a struggle and an obstacle when it comes to finding these jobs is that they are in fact hard to find, as well as there's a heightened level of competition for these jobs. Employers are receiving hundreds of resumes every single day in order to just apply for one of these jobs. So you have to not only adapt to how you've been looking for work, but where you've been looking for work as well and what kind of work you can expect to find out there, what kind of work you would like to be doing at this moment. Doing that will allow you to stand out amongst other candidates. And the key way to do so is to understand and highlight your transferable skills when it comes to a resume, when it comes to a job interview. The best thing about transferable skills is that these are skills that you already possess. You just may not realize it yet. The best way to really identify and understand these skills in order to optimize them is to begin by separating your skills by type. Um, so there are three different types of skills, um, knowledge-based skills, personality traits, or soft skills, as well as transferable skills. It's important to separate these to understand and take into inventory what you currently have, as well as what you can work on, what you can develop. Uh, just to go backtrack a bit for a few seconds, um, I had mentioned at the beginning before a few of you logged in, if you do have any questions, feel free to either do the hand raising uh, option that you have on uh, WebEx. You can also type into the chat and I will take the time to answer that either during or at the end of the presentation. Um, feel free to ask questions at any time. However, this presentation will be followed by a Q&A period where you have the time to think and ask any questions you can think of. Thank you. So back to the skills, knowledge-based skills, also known as hard skills. These are specific to a job or an occupation. These are the skills that you learned on the job and for the job. They're usually learned through um, specific education and training programs, as well as different types of experience that you've had, so hands-on skills. Um, they are really essential to describing what you're capable of doing and implementing really on the job. So this includes you know, the ability to repair a car, the ability to type a certain amount of words per minute, word processing computer skills, reducing expenses. These are essential, again, because they tell an employer straight away what you are able to do. And these are often some of the first things that they're looking for when they're checking off that checklist, um, when they're looking over your resume. So it is important to include them, especially if you in fact know how to repair a car, it's important to put that on a resume where you're applying for a job that is a perfect match to that exact skill. More examples of these knowledge-based skills, again, typing, word processing, company correspondence, accountants. Accountants do a lot of hands-on work, a lot of skills that were required um, to be developed through a lot of training. Um, so payroll, figuring taxes, computer accounting programs. A salesperson will have an entirely different set of knowledge-based skills, ones that uh, a mechanic or someone working in accounting will not necessarily have. So that includes billing, product displays, um, customer service. The types of customer service skills will in fact vary according to different careers. So this is an important difference to recognize and to take into consideration when you're building your own personal resume. You also have through that personality traits or soft skills. So these are, again, very important. All three types of skills are essential and important. However, they tell the employer something different compared to the other types of skills. They determine who you are, your attitude, and most importantly, your work ethic. So types of soft skills or personality traits include how you deal with time. So time management skills uh, are these types of skills how you deal with people and your emotions. Emotional intelligence goes straight into this. Again, an important factor to consider, especially if you're working with other people, which most jobs, you are required to work with other people. How you deal with supervision and being told how to do, what to do on the job, whether or not you take initiative or how you respond to certain situations, to certain opportunities, how you deal with problems, problem solving skills. All of these go into personality traits and your level of work ethic. 
these are often tied directly to your values. And these are also things that are directly sought after by employers. Because when they're looking to hire someone, they're looking to fill a blank, not only in the tasks that need to be performed, but oftentimes your team. Teamwork is essential to any company or organization. Um, they really are looking for someone who is the perfect fit. So if you haven't taken time to take inventory of your own personal values, professional as well as personal, this can be a great time to do so before or after during this presentation. Um, and that includes honesty, morality. You will have different morals depending on the person. Again, these can either be tied directly to your work or just for yourself personally within doing the work. Um, dedication, hard work, tenacity. Loyalty is something that's very important, especially to a lot of companies, organizations moving forward. Your attitude goes directly into the type of work that you do and the quality of your work. So attitude and energy are different from person to person. And again, they will affect your daily tasks. So this is definitely something that employers are looking for. And they will be looking for this both on your resume and in person when they meet you. It's something that can often show right away the kind of energy that you will bring to the table, to the team, your level of self-confidence, motivation, and most importantly, a lot of people would say, and I would agree, your willingness to learn. And your willingness to learn is directly tied to all of these skills as well as your transferable skills. So what exactly are transferable skills? Um, did you happen to know that only 25% of the skills we actually use on the job are knowledge-based and 75% of them are actually transferable skills? Um, if you didn't know that, you now know that. Um, so now let's move on to what exactly these transferable skills are. Transferable skills are non-specific job skills that are really go horizontally across all industries, vertically across all jobs, from entry level all the way to the executive officer level. Um, so from the starting point in your career up till the ending point, um, moving up, moving forward, you have transferable skills that can be applied from industry from, to industry. Um, you might not think that the skills that you possessed working in a certain position when you were, let's say, in high school or one of your first jobs out of university will be related to a job that you will have in 40 years from now. However, um, oftentimes, having those skills and possessing those skills is what allowed you to move forward, what allowed you to grow, because you are constantly developing these skills and these skills are constantly changing and adapting as you go through different experiences within and outside of the workforce. So transferable skills allow you to explore jobs not based on what you can do, but and as well as not necessarily where you have worked in the past. So that's the reason why we say even though a career might not be a perfect match to what you have had in the past on your resume, um, that doesn't mean you are underqualified. That does not mean that you should not take the time to apply because oftentimes the skills and the experiences that you had will in fact make you a better match than a lot of other people. These are skills that you could have had through various jobs developed through volunteering, hobbies, sports, and other life experiences. So that's why we do say take the time to consider the bigger picture, not just what you have done from a nine to five job, but what you've done outside of that. And this is applicable to someone, whether you are a recent graduate, whether you are looking to transfer, whether you're looking for a huge career change, um, maybe you've been lost for a while. That's why it's really important to take advantage and take inventory of all of your skills and everything that you have accomplished, because you have accomplished a lot. Uh, you may not realize it right now. However, this is the perfect time to take into consideration all of your achievements from inside to outside the workforce. They can really depend and vary with, from person to person, so that's why it's an extremely personal process, and this is what will really allow you to stand out compared to other candidates, because not everyone will possess the same transferable skills as you. Not everyone has the same experience as you. Not everyone has been through what you've been through. Um, it's really what makes you versatile. They are essentially the building blocks of a job and ultimately of a career. So that is putting a lot of pressure on transferable skills. But again, as we said before, you already possess all of these skills. It's just a matter of how you understand them, identify them, and present them. Because at the end of the day, um, you have to be the one to present these skills to an employer, whether that's directly word for word or through your examples that you give of your past experiences, your past conflicts, et cetera. 
Um, these are really essential skills, as I said before, for people who are facing layoffs, career changers, people with new passions, new fields. Maybe you've never explored a certain passion before. This would be the perfect time to do so. New graduates who feel like all of their experience is solely academic. Transferable skills really come in handy here um, once you know how to identify them. And more importantly, especially for the past few months and the few months moving forward, people who are entering the workforce after an extended absence. Um, again, these are all essential and essential situations where you will need to use your transferable skills and we're highlighting them will give you the step up towards finding a job and standing out compared to other candidates. You need the particular combination of skills, knowledge and abilities to not only approach the job search process as well as the job in itself. So this isn't only about how you're approaching your job search, but as well as what you're going to do for your everyday um, training in life in the job. So that's why it is important to really take the time to think over them. Here is a lovely list of the transferable skills, only a few of them. Again, these are all tied together and can be applicable to any job that you think of. I can guarantee you that. Um, so these are skills that we, you know, kind of often toss the words around like people skills, um, adaptability skills, communication skills, all of those are easily tossed around, but more than just people skills is what some, a company is looking for. Much more goes into that. Um, there's oral communication, counseling skills, coaching, mentoring skills. Just in there, those are different types of skills. Those are different types of verbal communication. When it comes to critical thinking and creative thinking, as well as problem solving skills. These especially, I would think of a recent graduate, possesses all of these skills. While you may have been doing that in the context of writing papers, um, that is also an achievement that is also essential to the work and the completion of the work that you are doing. So again, highlight and value those skills that you have, whether you learn them on the job, whether you learn them in school or in volunteering. You definitely have um, possessed and demonstrated language skills when working through volunteering, when demonstrating your artistic skills, when representing flexibility in a moment where you truly needed it, and a positive attitude. This can go across all of these types of transferable skills, all of these different groups of skills, um, and it's really something that a lot of people um, take for granted as well as undervalue when it comes to the quality of work that you represent and that you undertake as well as what an employer will perceive when looking, just looking at you during your interview. Um, a positive attitude is really what can make the difference at the end of the day. So it's important to highlight that not only as you're speaking, as you're communicating, as well as in the examples that you're presenting to them that you're putting straight onto your resume when discussing your skills and your experiences. Tied in with these and kind of um, two sides of the same coin are hidden skills. Hidden skills are the ones you do not know that you have. Um, and that's why I really am trying to emphasize the taking a, the time to take inventory and to really just think about what you've done and who you are. Because oftentimes, as I said before, we undervalue our experiences. We undervalue the work that we've done. We don't put enough and give ourselves enough credit for what we have done. Um, so that's why it's really important to understand that every experience that you have had is most importantly a learning experience, but also adds to your repertoire of skills. So this is one of my favorite examples, creative skills, cake presentation, um, design, artistic skills. Um, again, you might not think that those are essential and do apply to a job that you are applying for. However, if it's something that you really have taken the time to develop, if it's something that you have really put a lot of effort into and are, most importantly are proud of, then that is definitely a skill that you can brag about having. Um, you know, something as simple as, you know, working with numbers, being able to work with numbers. This for myself is not something that I would be able to put on a resume. Math, I could not put that on my resume. However, maybe you could, maybe that's through your schooling, maybe that's just the simple everyday tasks that you've done in your jobs before. Um, I know a lot of people who will look at a list like this and go, oh yeah, I do spend a lot of time doing a lot of calculations every single day, but that's just, that's just part of my job. 
However, that is in fact an essential skill that will transition throughout a lot of different positions. And at the end of the day, that is something that is required out of a lot of jobs and that people are going to be looking for. So why not let them know that you're able to do that? Why not let them know that you have achieved a lot of success by doing that, have brought a lot of great numbers, a lot of great um, deliverables to a company just by representing that skill and just by being really good at math. Um, it's a skill at the end of the day. So again, why are these skills so important to an employer? Transferable skills, whether it's initiative, motivation, communication skills, self-awareness, honestly are some of the most sought after skills by employers. These, as I've said before, represent your experiences and show hiring managers that you are able to grow, learn, adapt, and maximize your success. Because at the end of the day, your success is their success. And that's something that matters to them the most. Um, that's why all of the examples that you should be putting on your resume, all of the experiences that you should be describing should be really focused on achievements and results. Because they want to know that you're going to bring them the exact same results and the exact same kinds of results. And that's where really um, the not undervaluing your experiences does come in. Because maybe you're throughout your entire uh, job search process, you haven't been putting on that you have met this level of achievements, hired this amount of people, spoken to a crowd of this many people, et cetera, et cetera, putting in specific numbers, quantifying and qualifying your experiences. Maybe you haven't been putting down your resume. However, maybe that's exactly what an employer is looking to hear and looking to learn about you. It's one thing to explain that you are a good communicator. It's another to explain that you have a certain level of verbal skills and public speaking skills, and to prove that by saying, oh, I presented to 50 people on a regular basis throughout my time at this company. Um, that is an excellent skill, and that is an exa excellent example that demonstrates that you take initiative, that you are comfortable with public speaking, and you are comfortable with thinking um, and taking advantage of opportunities in the moment, because that's really what goes into public speaking. Trust me, as someone who is giving a lot of presentations, oftentimes you have to think on the spot. Um, so all of that really goes into the example that you're giving. You're communicating much more to an employer than you think by giving specific examples that really do highlight your transferable skills and quantify them in a way. So how exactly do you highlight these skills that you have? Um, there are several ways to do so when it comes to a resume. Um, this is where a lot of people struggle as the first step when it comes to identifying and highlighting their achievements, because maybe you think that the job that you're applying to is not a perfect match with the experiences that you have had. This can make you feel unqualified and like you do not have a chance. A lot of people will experience this, including um, recent graduates, and in a lot of cases, women will also experience and feel this when applying to certain jobs. Um, all that it takes is for you to really create a link between the skills that you have had and used in the past and those that are required of a desired job. In doing so, um, you can really demonstrate this quite easily by just creating a list of your qualifications directly onto your resume. You are qualified for a lot of work for a lot of different positions. It's important for you to make that clear to your employer. And by really listing the qualifications that you do have from, you know, anything from your communication, motivation skills, from the hard skills that you do have should go directly onto your resume and is a way of communicating to your employers what you can do and what you will do for them. Turn the accomplishments that you do have into quantified statements. That's what I was explaining before with, you know, using number examples because using percentages, numbers, amounts of times, again, tell them concretely, I achieved this, I gave my employers this result, I allowed for them to meet their goals as a company. That is exactly what an employer wants you to bring to them, whether you are working you know, in the financial industry, whether you're working for a nonprofit. Um, quantifying your experiences is, an, is essential to any type of job that you are applying to. 
it's important in this way to really tailor your resume and your cover letter to each employer and each company that you're applying to. Um, it shows effort when you take the time to really edit down and make some cuts onto your resume, when you take the time to use the vocabulary and the terminology that they're using. Even that way, by just taking a look at a job ad and looking at the tasks and responsibilities, sometimes qualifications required, can give you an idea of the terminology and of the skills that they're actually looking for. Employers do tell you what they are looking for. It's your job to take what they're looking for and expand on that and really put yourself um, into the shoes of someone who would be doing that job. There's also different ways to highlight that directly in an interview, you know, when you're on the spot and being asked something, especially in an interview, sometimes it can be hard to think on your feet. If you feel like you don't have the skill of thinking on your feet, that is fine and that is something that definitely you can work on, especially with something like a perfectly developed formula that you can memorize and really take advantage of when answering these questions. And you can definitely practice both by writing it down and by doing some mock interviews. So this is a formula from The Muse, which is an online career platform. It is based in New York City. Um, however, I still would recommend checking it out because it has a lot of great interview examples and blog posts by people who are in different industries and interviewing for different positions. So this is a great formula that really highlights um, in an answer the prior role that you've had in your past, the responsibilities that you had in that position, and what those responsibilities taught you or allowed you to learn. And making a connection to that and how you will use that skill in your new position that you're applying for really is exactly the kind of example that an employer is looking to hear. It is making the link between what you have done and what you will be able to do. If you can throw in what you're going to learn or what you can learn into that, and as well as your enthusiasm for a position, then that is even better. That is 10 out of 10, that is 12 out of 10. So here is an example of how you can highlight that in an interview situation. Um, this is a person who is applying to be a communications assistant, having previously worked as an admin assistant. So in an interview, when asked how their past experience can be connected to the position they're hiring, they're applying for, this is an answer um, that, again, tells an employer exactly what they want to hear. As an administrative assistant, I drafted and proofread executive correspondence, which taught me how to write persuasively for a variety of audiences and with different goals in mind. That's a skill I would draw from, from day one as a communications assistant for your company. Um, so again, this is really linking past, present, and future, because your present is what you have learned and what you are now able to do and what you have been doing. Um, so this is kind of a great way to link past, present, and future together and really give them an idea that you are doing that, um, that level of thinking and you do have that level of self-awareness. Really, this whole process demonstrates all the skills that you do have. That's why um, a lot of them are skills that you don't realize that you have. A lot of them are hidden skills. And just by taking the chance to fill out these formulas, take inventory of what you have, in that process, you are developing even more skills and you are demonstrating even more skills. Um, so you really, it's just a win-win situation by taking the time to think through this um, and by taking the time to attend a presentation like this today. Um, a big question that we often get at YES, especially um, because we do work with populations uh, aged between 18 and 39 for the majority, um, we have a lot of recent graduates, uh, whether it's people recently graduating with a master's degree, a PhD, um, even SAGEP and a bachelor's degree. Um, we have a bunch of graduates who are wondering how they can actually make use of what they have learned in university and how they can apply to positions outside of academia, especially if their entire experience and their entire resume right now only has academic achievements and academic experience. So a lot of times students um, of any age uh, might not have been working during their education, might have been really focusing on the degree that they were going through. And because of this, when especially looking at what is required out of a job, looking at the skills list that is required of a potential candidate, this can make a lot of people feel underqualified and 
lead to them undervaluing their actual accomplishments. This is one of the main things that we do target at YES, is really learning how to value your experiences and value yourself moving forward into the job search process. This is all simply a matter of reframing your academic work, reframing how you've been thinking about it yourself, because it's important to value your own accomplishments and recognize them, but also this is a matter of reframing how you've been presenting that on paper and in person. So it's all a matter of thinking as a first question, what is it about the experiences that you've had in terms of tasks, responsibilities, actions, reactions, that will help you stand out compared to other applicants? What about this experience of your degree, of working on your degree, struggling through your degree, will allow you to succeed in this company, in this position, within this organization? And for that, we have a few tips about how to get the thinking started even further. So take a moment and think about the biggest challenges that you face in academia. This can also apply to um, other jobs that you have had if you're not a recent grad. What exactly were the solutions that you came up with? What was the conflict that maybe you faced? What did you learn from that experience? Again, a lot of skills and a lot of achievements can come out of your learning process in any situation, inside and outside of work, um, in volunteering, just in everyday life, et cetera. Think about someone who inspired you during your education. What do you admire about them? In what ways do you aspire to be like them and why? Oftentimes, the people that we admire are the people that possess skills that maybe we want to have or skills that we have and we hope to emulate just like them. Um, so it does, um, it does really matter to take the time to consider who you admire and what you admire about certain people, um, especially if those people are the people that you're surrounding in your life and have really taken part in your actual success. Um, so it can be a great example to bring up an old professor, a mentor maybe that you had um, into your resume, into the examples that you give in an interview. So as I said before, why and how do you believe any of these skills that you're describing will allow you to bring success to the company that you're applying for? Um, again, taking the time to really write these down and answer these questions will bring out a lot of answers and a lot of skills, maybe a few stories that you didn't realize you had um, in your past. So I really recommend taking the time to write these out. Maybe discuss them with a friend, maybe whether it's a mock interview or just a discussion um, with a friend, with a colleague, with a mentor can bring out a lot of stuff that you didn't realize um, is actually a great achievement and shows a lot of your character as a person and as an employee. This is one of my favorite charts um, because this is really an example of reframing your perceived weaknesses and framing them into skills and areas of improvement, either that you already improved on or that you are hoping to improve in the future. This is often what I give as examples to other students um, because there are a lot of examples that are really um, there are really examples of people putting themselves a bit down, maybe undervaluing what they actually have, focusing on the negative. Um, but there's a way to transform that and there's a way to really reframe how you're thinking about yourself and what you're doing from day to day. Uh, even some of the weaknesses that you have, how you can get out of them is an example of a strength. So a lot of times students will say um, that they are too lazy and that is why they might not ever get a job outside of academia. The example that they give is that they start essays the night before they're due um, and they feel no pressure whatsoever to start them before that. This is definitely a position that I've been in myself before, starting an essay the night before. I do not recommend it, and yes, I do not recommend it. However, um, so a lot of people would think, oh, that means I'm too lazy, I'm never gonna get a job. Who would hire me if I do something last minute? Take the time and consider what skills are required and what skills you demonstrate when you do finish that paper last minute. Um, too lazy, or can you work under short deadlines and a lot of pressure? Again, do not recommend it. However, um, through that and through that tenacity that you had in that moment, um, you demonstrated an important skill. And maybe through that, you in fact learned, as I learned, um, you should not be finishing papers last minute. You should not be working under pressure. Maybe that pressure was helpful for you. Maybe you learned the value of you know, time management. Um, so this is just one example of how you can really reframe what you have been through. Um, yeah, I, a lot of times people will also say as one of their weaknesses that they're too stubborn, um, that you don't like backing down and you don't like admitting when you're wrong. Again, this can be a chance for you to think about the situations where you did end up admitting that you were wrong or what came out of you 
presenting yourself and reacting a bit in a stubborn manner. Are you stubborn or are you persistent? Do you always carry something through to the end, whether it's your personal values or whether it's a project required of work, required of school? Maybe you, in fact, learn how to discuss conflict, uh, manage conflict throughout this experience that you had. So again, this is a great chart just to take into consideration what you perceive to be weaknesses, what you perceive to be areas that you can work on, and really understand them and the skills that go into them and areas that you can really improve in. And again, these show growth. Um, no employer is expecting you to have been perfect from the day you were born up to when they meet you. Um, that is unrealistic and that is definitely not what they're looking for. They don't want the perfect candidate they want the perfect fit for them. And the perfect fit is really um, someone who is able to demonstrate this kind of growth, someone who is honest, but honest in a way that shows that they are going to be a great candidate for them. If you are still unsure about what your transferable skills are, again, I've been saying it over and over, take the time to self-assess. Use a checklist to identify your skills that you've used in previous jobs, schoolwork, volunteering activities, et cetera. At the end of this presentation, in the reference slide, reference slide, you can see one of the first links is actually to a um, checklist. It's an online checklist that actually allows you to like click things off. Um, really, that allows you to see a physical example right in front of you of all the skills that you do have. So I would recommend typing up that link onto Google and checking out the list of transferable skills um, to really begin your um, new transition into your job search. Um, it's a great idea. Take the time to research. Use websites like Human Resources and Social Development Canada website in order to find out what the jobs what jobs are out there, as well as what skills that these employers are actually looking for. Not everyone will have the same skills. However, not every employer will be looking for the same skills in every candidate. So that's why it's important to actually understand what people are looking for and what you should really focus on presenting to them. Take time to, as I've been saying before, develop the links between what employers are looking for and what you already have. You do not need to go out and develop and work through 10 more degrees, take a million courses and give away a bunch of money um, to develop new skills for the chance that you might get a job out of it. Chances are you already have the majority of the skills that you need for a certain position. And if you don't, then maybe then, especially if you really want a career in a certain field, that's when you'll really know if it's worth it to take more courses, develop more training, um, do some more tests online, go to some more workshops. Um, so really focus on what you have right now, and then you can be begin to develop your plan moving forward. This is just an example of um, someone who was connecting their transferable skills to a new position. Again, it's all about looking for the par parallels between the profession and your background. This is an example of a web designer who wanted to become a uh, someone working in public relations. Um, so this is just their little path um, and kind of a timeline moving forward towards creating that link and seeing where those two positions overlap. So as a web designer, they were someone who really worked with diverse clients until um, demonstrated excellent listening skills. Um, they took the time to think creatively and had to think creatively. They understood business lingo because they had to with the different clients that they were working for. They really had to meet deadlines and were great at meeting deadlines. It was essential to the performance and the job itself. They worked very well under pressure. All of these things um, end up aligning perfectly with someone working in public relations. Um, take the time to think about a lot of your jobs in this way, um, kind of develop this kind of timeline, and you'll see, again, a lot of these skills and job descriptions do, in fact, overlap. So that concludes the section on transferable skills. Um, now moving into what is probably a bit more relevant at this moment, um, who is actually hiring right now? Again, as we started on this presentation, um, the past few months have been a little strange, um, especially when it comes to uh, the workforce. There have been a lot of layoffs, a lot of companies changing, transitioning how they do their actual work. 
Um, and because of that, we'll see a lot of changes and have already seen a lot of changes in the workforce and in the labor market. And when it comes to working on your job search plan and considering um, the job search process that you're going through right now, as well as the stress that you might be going through, it's really important to take into consideration the current context and the situation right now. Um, that can often take a lot of pressure off of your own shoulders. And understanding the situation out there, who is actually hiring, can help you really target these companies, can help you really have a clear set of mind, set of thoughts towards approaching your job search process. Um, something that I took the chance to do the other day is I went onto LinkedIn and I clicked on a link that I saw right beside my, um, my intro page that said, who is hiring in Canada? Um, I wasn't looking for this, however, I stumbled upon it. And oftentimes um, that's really where the best opportunities come from, where you just stumble upon something. Um, so this is an article that was updated about a week and a half ago. However, it's constantly being updated every day. Um, so thank you uh, to the editor at LinkedIn who uploaded this and continues to edit this every day. Um, so right now, these are the industries that are in high demand and that are increasing their hiring all over Canada. I chose to include this in here because there were quite a few Quebec um, examples as well as Montreal examples. However, a lot of those jobs will be ones that will be hiring remotely. So that's still um, worth considering. And I wanted to put that up here just because of the numbers that are being represented here. Um, they aren't necessarily the largest numbers of hirings. They are not in the thousands. However, I think it is really important to notice these numbers and notice a trend. Uh, just the fact that the company Sienna Living is hiring over 500 positions across Canada is a good sign and is a sign that not only are companies going back into normal operations, but there are new opportunities that are out there. Maybe it's just a matter of how you've been looking and where you have the ways that you have been approaching your job search. Um, again, these are just some great examples, especially um, Montreal and Quebec based. This is also an important uh, thing to take into consideration. The industries that were um, the top hiring areas in Quebec prior to um, this COVID situation. So the top industries in Quebec in 2019 included manufacturing, real estate, healthcare, public administration, and construction. Construction is actually one of the highest industries and one of the industries that's gonna be coming back. Retail, again, was very hard hit by this situation. However, again, it's gonna be opening up again and be coming back. Um, just looking at restaurants, for example, I know that in Quebec City, that restaurants are actually already open where he has 50% capacity. In Montreal, they are opening up um, in about four days. Um, so that's just another example of an industry that is going to be rehiring as well as developing new practices and policies in order to adapt to the health regulations moving forward. So this is an example of a type of labor market research that you can take on in order to understand where it's worth looking, what are the industries that will have the highest prospects of hiring, and what industries will likely be increasing despite the fact that they experience a lot of loss. Again, retail is an example. Um, the malls aren't going to stay shut forever. I think like Place saint Foy is actually open in Quebec City. I was surprised to hear that the other day. That's great, however. Um, so that's just one example of how hirings are going to increase, um, just as everyday normal activities are going to increase. I also took the chance to look into some organizations that are local to Quebec City. Um, oftentimes when people conduct some job search research, um, they forget to add in the keywords that they are looking for for a certain job, including the place that they're hoping to work in. Oftentimes when you do some research on who is hiring, it's important to really put in the words Quebec City, Quebec Province, Montreal, if you're looking for Montreal, um, because oftentimes um, a lot more results will pop up from all over Canada, sometimes in the United States, sometimes, um, maybe not now, but positions that we're actually looking to hire um, internationally. So that's why it's really important to take that into consideration, especially when you're conducting a search right now. Um, so really looking for Quebec-based examples. And sometimes that includes just organizations that have been around all along, but you maybe 
have not been considering are hiring a lot of people right now. Um, so this is an example of the CQSB website um, that has a lot of jobs and openings in the Quebec City area as well as the region surrounding. Educational institutions are actually great for hiring, not only at the moment, but in the past as well. It might not seem like it because a lot of the academic changes in calendars um, for students not being in school physically until um, um, about right now, I believe, for um, primary school students. However, there's still a lot of hiring going on, especially to meet the changes that are happening in educational institutions. So not only teachers, but staff and administration, support teams, a lot of professional um, counselors and psychologists are being sought after right now. Again, this is a screenshot from the CQSB website. When you go and take a look at it, you will see that a lot of um, professional positions are opening up right now. So this is just one example of looking locally and looking at places that you may not have thought to look up before for a job. This is our screenshots that I accessed from the Canadian Labor Market Information website. Um, these are examples of new jobs that are opening up. Maybe there aren't positions that you have considered before. However, there are a lot of positions being created and that the government is investing into to again adapt to the COVID situation. Maybe you have never worked um, specializing in building disinfection before. However, maybe you possess all of the skills required for this position. Maybe it will fit your current needs. There is a difference between your um, larger long-term needs and your current needs. So if this is something that you can consider as a short-term or you know, few years kind of solution, then check this out um, on the CLMI website. Um, also, the different companies are going to be increasing in how they're hiring. So this um, ad for Fenite Magistral also gives an example of how many positions that were laid off, but all the positions that they're hoping to replace as well as bring people back. So it's a great example to hear that companies are not only rehiring, but also hiring new positions. Um, so again, this is another example that may not fill your exact needs at the moment. However, I hope at least that they represent examples of the fact that hiring is still going on. There are still a lot of jobs out there. Again, maybe you need to change where you're looking. Maybe you need to change what you're looking for exactly. However, there is a lot out there. Um, sometimes you have to dig a little on the internet. However, they are in fact out there. Consider the top industries hiring. Um, I was suggested when developing this presentation to think about the local companies in Quebec City. Um, oftentimes, those are going to be the ones, the bigger names, that will have a lot of hiring. Um, financial institutions in Quebec are huge employers. Desjardins TD, um, BDC is currently hiring in a lot of different positions. Maybe you never thought about working with a bank before. However, maybe you happen to be someone who has experience in account managing, in tech support, customer service. Maybe you are an experienced team manager or director. All of these are examples of the positions that I found on the BDC website. Um, insurance companies are also constantly hiring. AI Financial Group has been hiring throughout this entire situation. So those are examples where I went directly onto their websites rather than looking somewhere like indeed.com in order to find these openings. Oftentimes that is what it takes is diversifying where and how you are exactly looking for jobs. Again, it's time to adapt how you have been looking. Everyone is adapting at the moment. Employers themselves are adapting. So that's why it's important for you to adapt as well. How else can you find these jobs that are hiring? As I said before, try LinkedIn. Um, if you don't have a LinkedIn page right now, um, do not worry, do not fret, do not go a rush and make one. Um, if you're interested in learning on how to not only create a LinkedIn page, but how to optimize it as a research tool, Yes Montreal does offer a workshop on that, so you can check out our website after. I will give some more information at the end. Um, however, just at the base level, you can go on to LinkedIn and use it as a search engine. I typed in hashtag still hiring and hashtag Quebec jobs, and I came up with a lot of different ads, a lot of different postings from companies themselves four different positions that are hiring. That includes a lot of um, banks themselves, um, a bunch of different companies that were either locally based in Montreal or in Quebec City also had um, positions posted. That's because they know that the people that are logged onto LinkedIn will likely be the kind of people that they would want um, to hire themselves, people that take the chance to go onto LinkedIn and take a chance to use it as a networking skill um, are often the kinds of people that employers are in fact looking for. As I said before, keep your eyes open for new positions. Um, 
post-COVID, um, people are going to be looking for um, candidates to work in health and safety administration, screeners, more importantly, people to take statistics. There's a lot of data and information that's going to be required to be accumulated. Someone's got to analyze that. So if that's a skill that you possess, you're probably going to find some work moving forward. Um, companies have to develop new policies and train employees around those policies. It's not as simple as putting up a sign that says, like, stay two meters away from each other. There's going to be constant changes moving forward, so companies really have to adapt to that. Um, money is being invested into new projects, into new areas, new staffs, new specialists, and more importantly, construction. That is an area that a lot of people um, are and have been hired in. So you can look forward to um, new areas and new projects um, moving forward. So maybe you're still a bit worried about the skill level that you do have. As I said before, um, you do not need to drop everything and go and take on two or three degrees in order to find a job. However, there are opportunities if you are looking to upskill or if you are looking to um, maybe step back into education, maybe um, work towards some new skills in order to increase, increase your chances, not only finding a job, but also pursuing your passions. Uh, again, look no further than home. Um, Cégep saint St. Lawrence has a lot of options. Um, I myself attended St. Lawrence. I did a two-year degree, um, and I knew a lot of people who actually took the time to take these different courses and enjoy themselves. I can uh, vouch for the staff at Cégep St. Lawrence. Um, they were incredible, incredible uh, institution, incredible team. Um, so that's why I know that these two programs in particular um, will be beneficial to a lot of people and enjoyable as well. So if you're interested in getting into business administration, you can take an AUC program that is bilingual, courses in English and in French, only $89 per session. And there is an uh, information session that is going on in September of 2020. Um, to start in um, 2021. Uh, so this is all at the continuing education um, section of the Champlain St. Lawrence page. Um, again, all the information is available bilingually. And if you have more questions, there is some contact information. You can also become a local Quebec tour guide. Um, this is something that I would love to do. So maybe it's something that you have the passion for as well. You know Quebec City, you know the surrounding areas. If you already speak English, that's even better because this program is actually designed to um, help French speakers improve their communication skills in English. So it is open to everyone. It is a bit more targeted towards French speakers when it comes to improving those skills. However, this is a program where you learn inside the class and also outside of the class. Um, it's e-learning combined with on-the-job on the learning as well. Um, and it's a great chance to really just, um, again, explore a passion that you may have had, uh, maybe work a bit more on your public speaking skills. And it's overall a great opportunity that definitely I would recommend taking advantage of and checking out. You can also look into more information on the programs themselves at Champlain St. Lawrence. Again, they offer a wide range of programs if you are looking to um, start SAGEP. There is also the Eastern Quebec Learning Center. Again, uh, only have positive things to say about this learning center. I know so many people who have gone through to finish their high school diploma, to finish their credits. Only amazing things to say about the incredible staff members that work there. Um, vocational trades, if you're looking to get into health, nursing, secretarial studies. Again, more options to start business and start business school. Um, it's fantastic. And through the SARCA initiative, um, where the uh, Eastern Quebec Learning Center really is trying to encourage people um, age 16 and above to really complete their high school diploma it is really an incredible initiative um, that is entirely there for people who, again, have not finished school, are struggling financially, are really looking to step back into the workforce. Um, this is really a great place where you can really take the time to learn and approach your job search in an extremely affordable way. There is also places such as Université Laval, where maybe you have not considered before, um, where you can, in fact, pursue education in English. Um, they do have core programs and core courses, pardon me, and electives that are offered in English, specifically in their business program, because Laval understands and recognizes that the English language is essential when it comes to conducting business, especially not only across the province, but worldwide as well. Um, another important thing to note about Laval University is 
is that students can actually turn in assignments and exams in English or French. I know people that have done this themselves. Um, it's a great opportunity, especially if you are bilingual and you do feel comfortable sitting through a lecture in French, however, turning in your assignments in English. Um, it can be a chance for you to work on your bilingualism as well. So I invite you to really explore their options on their website. A lot of their website is in French, however, they do have quite a few bilingual sections. Um, so again, take a look at Université Laval. And above all, if you are still looking for some help when it comes to your, your uh, job search, when it comes to where to even start, maybe you are facing quite a few obstacles right now, I would highly recommend you come and check out Yes Montreal, uh, the Yes website. Um, we are here to help and we are here to ensure that you know that you are not alone. It can be really stressful looking for a job. It can feel very isolating. What YES tries to do as part of our main mandate is to really make sure that you know you're not alone and to help you work on your skills, to work on your success in your job search. Um, we are especially tailoring a lot of our workshops and our programming to this current situation because we recognize that a lot of struggles uh, do come as a result of the current COVID situation. We help out by encouraging and helping people to develop uh, their career planning and employment strategies, skills for the job search. Part of YES's mandate is not to um, present people with a job. Uh, we will not find you a specific job. We will not turn in your resume for you. However, we are going to help you develop the skills such as auto uh, autonomy and confidence to conduct your job search for the rest of your life. Um, we are there as a uh, first step in your support system, first step in your network and we can help you um, develop those two things as well. And above all, we can give you insight on the local job market through a lot of our services. That's including uh, a whole bunch of amazing workshops that you can attend online for absolutely free. I name dropped the LinkedIn workshop that we do have. I do recommend that one. We also have workshops on updating your resume, preparing for interviews, staying motivated during your job search. They take place twice a week um, on a rotational basis. And again, you can come to them for absolutely free. You just have to register ahead of time. Um, they're an excellent opportunity to not only learn, but be surrounded by other job seekers who might be going through the same thing as you and get a chance to hear some questions and get some answers to them. Uh, we are a, a very fun and positive organization. It gives me great joy to work for them and it gives me the same joy to be able to present this with Voice of English Speaking Quebec. Um, again, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, I uh, originally grew up in Quebec City and a lot of the opportunities that I had came from Voice of English Speaking Quebec and the organizations and um, educational institutions there. Um, it felt a bit isolating at first growing up as a English speaker in Quebec uh, and just outside Quebec City. I'm from Portneuf, if anyone knows where that is. Um, and yeah, Voice of English Speaking Quebec really made me feel at home, allowed me to meet a lot of great people and really encouraged me, whether it was just, you know, seeing their newsletter, seeing the posts in the uh, in, um, different stories in the Quebec Chronicle, um, all of that really made me feel quite at home. So I'm very happy that you guys are taking advantage of the services that VQ is offering, and I hope that you get that same um, kind of help and support from YES, because at the end of the day, we are all here to help you um, and to make sure that you don't feel alone throughout this period and throughout any period in your life moving forward. Um, so that concludes my little advertisement of our two organizations, uh, and that also concludes the presentation that I have for you guys today. My name is Catherine. If you do have any questions pertaining to YES, um, you can feel free to contact me directly at cmarka at yesmontreal.ca. I will be more than happy to answer your questions. As well, you can contact us um, at info at yesmontreal.ca. We'll be happy to answer your questions in there as well.